Hello and welcome back everyone to An Uncertain Future Season 2 Part 4. I'm super excited for this, though I have to admit today's video will be a bit shorter because as most of you know, this was originally a series that I only uploaded to A3 and Wattpad and as such it has some scenes that are not suited for youtube let's put it like that you can of course still read them there if you want to the story is perfectly understandable without reading those and here are all the scenes from this chapter that are okay <laughs> enjoy Kuro was with Bogota at the local convenience store to buy some supplies for dinner. To their shame, the grocery shopping got neglected a bit after the recent events and the fridge was empty. With the meal plan he made for Kema in one hand and the basket in the other, he browsed through the aisle. Occasionally, he would throw a short request in Bogota's direction to get an item on the list, while not really paying attention to his mate at all. He was too focused on the task at hand, suddenly finding himself in parts of this store he had never seen before. Kema's cravings had started recently and one Instagram post about a new outlandish dish could have him hanging from one of his mate's arms seconds later with pleading eyes that would get him everything he could ask for. And he knew it. It resulted in a very confused Kuro looking for spices that sounded like someone had accidentally put the letters in the wrong order. Just now he stood clueless before a shelf filled with all sorts of colorful looking powders and herbs in all shapes and forms, but no matter how many times his eyes wandered over the rows of names, he couldn't find what he was looking for. He gulped. Ko, do you... He turned around to the ace, only to notice that the space next to him was empty. The only other person beside him in the aisle was an older Omega, who other than him seemed to exactly know where to find what they needed. Yet, the Alpha was nowhere to be found. Confused, Kuro looked around for the frosted tip hair, but nothing. He frowned. One would think that someone of Bokuto's build wouldn't be hard to spot in a crowd, let alone that someone with his personality could be so stealthy, yet here he was, alone and with no clue as to where the owl had wandered off to. Without sparing another glance at the spices, that by now seemed to mock him with their confusing names and all but similar appearances, he took off to find his alpha. He could still clearly feel his emotions, a mix of wonder and perplexion, radiating through their bonds so he couldn't be far. He scolded himself for not noticing that the other had left and briefly wondered how many items to retrieve he had just mumbled to no one in particular while continuing to go on as though nothing had changed. What would he do once the child would be old enough to walk around? What if Bogota and the child would wander off? Or... Kataro! Koro internally facepalmed. If Bogoto truly would end up being the father of the child, they would have to get a leash. No way anyone would be able to keep them under control. He suddenly had a lot more respect for Bokoto's mother. I was looking for you. Well, for the past five minutes, since he noticed his absence. The alpha blinked surprised as if he had been torn from a dream. He was still a bit perplexed as he met Kuro's gaze. I got the thing you asked for. He had Nakura the box, who only now realized what had captured Bogota's attention to the point where he had forgotten time. The A stood before a shelf filled with baby food, each can decorated with cute little designs on the label. Thanks. He took the item and followed Bogota's gaze over the product. The 
This is really happening, isn't it? I'm not dreaming. No, you're not. He paused, suddenly feeling very much overwhelmed himself. We'll be parents soon. He yelled as his voice threatened to give out on him. Their eyes met, and slowly but surely a wide smile spread on Vokuta's face. He reached for Kuro's hand and took the meal plan from him so that he could hold it. A sudden wave of warm excitement rushed through him, through their bond, and he felt much lighter at once. I can't wait. Kuro nodded and gently guided Bokuto to get the rest of the items. He didn't let go of his hand again until they were driving home. Do you think it'll be a boy or a girl? Or neither? His eyes sparkled in excitement as he considered all the different possibilities. Kuro smiled and let the joy fill him through their bond as he drove them home. The pleasant scent of warm oak filled the car as he tried to hold back his own pheromones to leave more room for Bokotos. I don't know. I'm kinda hoping for a baby girl, though we would probably end up clueless. Bokut laughed, but nodded. Yeah. He looked at Kuro curiously. Why a girl, though? You asked. It's just a hunch. In the end, it really doesn't matter. Bokuta hummed in agreement. What about you? I don't care. I'm just excited. I want to know everything about them and give them all the world has to offer. The raven laughed. So cheesy. You were thinking the same thing. Yeah, but you said it. The ace pouted but reached for Kuro's hand again. How's work? Did you already talk with your boss about paternity leave? He sighed. Not yet. We haven't told anyone yet. I'm still waiting for Kemma to give the okay. Despite planning for a baby, this all happened so suddenly. From one day to the other, all their preparations seemed meaningless. He wondered if it would be the same once the baby was born, and felt the distinct urge to bury himself in the books again they had at home. Vokut noticed the sudden tension and gently caressed the back of his hand with his thumb. You're gonna be an amazing father, Tetsu. He soothingly wrapped his own scent into Kuro's skin and watched as the raven visibly relaxed under his touch. He took a shattered breath and at the next traffic light pulled Bokuto in for a brief kiss. I couldn't do any of this without you, you know. Bokuto's cheeks warmed and he smiled widely. True, after all, who would they learn volleyball from otherwise? Hey, I still know how to play. Their banter lasted almost the whole way home as they accused each other of teaching the child all kinds of stupid things. Which, let's face it, in the end, they probably teach them this stuff together. Worst case, with Kema's help and Akashi as the only responsible person in all this mess. He couldn't wait. In his mind, he already imagined all three of them with their little pup between them being scolded by Keiji and covered from head to toe in some kind of paint. He would love it. Bokuto seemed to think of something similar, judging by the dreamy expression on his face, when suddenly both of them were torn rather roughly back into reality. The cars behind them honked at them as Kuro did a rather sudden stop along with his heart before it sped up at twice the normal speed. 
He carefully drove to the side of the road, waiting for a second to catch his breath and collect himself, before suddenly bursting out laughing. This was just too unexpected. His face was flushed a deep shade of crimson as he correctly identified the sensation trickling into him through their wand. They were close enough to home now to fear Kemma and Akashi, and apparently their Omegas had fun keeping themselves busy. They settled for a comfortable movie night with lots of cuddles. All three of his mates paid extra attention to Akashi after Kuro informed him that he had almost slipped into subspace, and the Omega accepted it begrudgingly. He liked the attention, but he was also pretty similar to Kuro in the sense that he preferred to be on the giving side when it came to spoiling his partners with love and care. It was quite a fascinating dynamic. Bokoto too would move mountains to satisfy their every need, while Kemba would, and let's be honest, could, buy them whatever their hearts desired. Yet both enjoyed it equally as much to get pampered and praised. Kemma especially took every opportunity to let his mates spoil him, which was perfect because it was exactly what they loved to do. Akashi laughed as halfway through the first movie the smaller turned around with an all too familiar pleading look in his eyes. Can you make me an omelette? Today's victim was Kuro, since Akashi was resting and Bukuta in the kitchen was a hospital bill waiting to happen. And of course, the alpha didn't deny him. Cravings? Came on audit and watched as the other got up to provide for his pregnant mate. It was honestly a beautiful sight and the air sang with the light pheromones of love and happiness. Thank you so so much for watching to the end, I hope you liked it, if you did don't forget to like and subscribe and tell me in the comments what your favorite part of this video was and your favorite quote under the pinned comment, that would mean the world to me. Now I know it's not that much shorter than the other videos, which is it bad that my first smut chapter of this fanfic is also the longest chapter? I, I broke that record later and it was not smut so like... yes. Special thanks to my nerdy necos, y'all help this channel so so much. If you want to support me as well and are not a nerdy neck yet, check out the join button under this video. Also, check out the Discord, the link is in the channel description because this community is awesome and everyone on the Discord is awesome. I love you guys so much, you are amazing. Next part comes out on Sunday and then every Tuesday and Wednesday. And here are more videos, now have one fun, amazing day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day.